Okay, we are back on Monterey on tonight. It's 8 o'clock on the West Coast. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. This is my third guest for the evening, A.J. Rasomni. Welcome, A.J. Uh, listen, much. my pleasure to have you here. And A.J. and I yesterday did a radio show over in Santa Cruz at KSCO. I was a pitch hit host for MZ. Michael Zurlin, who's in Africa, and uh, AJ was my guest for the whole two hours, and um, <laughs> the show brought two people from the audience, because we said after the show we were going over to Ella's at the airport to see Shallow in Watsonville, and... Um, Actually brought three people. Three people? Yeah. There were three people... He's got a fan club already. The Raven fan club. <laughs> from, he's got a fan club from the on-air appearance on the radio show at KSCO yesterday. So here's what I did. I said, you know what? There's a radio show in your future, AJ. So I called my friend Guillermo Moreno because AJ's from Fresno. And I said, you've got a talk show guy and extraordinaire. And so he's going to go on the radio now in Fresno on KXEX. Hopefully we'll hear him pretty soon because they stream live on the Internet so I can listen to AJ's show. We, we haven't got it all put together yet, but it all happened because he did such a great job on the radio yesterday on the Santa Cruz station. We got a call from Australia. We got a call from <laughs> Australia. I mean, it's unbelievable what has happened. But this man I met, and it's a great story, do you mind if I tell the story? Sure, go ahead. All right. So he was a guest on a show in Fresno that's no longer on the air, but it was on for several years, uh, called Connect With Me on my station, the Me TV station in Fresno. And the host was John Malice, who's a friend. And he had seen an article written about AJ in the Business Journal. So he called AJ and invited him to be on the show. And I happened to be watching that day, right? Exactly. So I'm watching the show. He's being interviewed by... By John Malos, and I hear him talking, and the line that caught my attention was, he said, "You don't bake a cake without a recipe." And you know, I said, "That's my line. I use that all the time." <laughs> so as soon as the show was over, I called John and I said, "John, do you have AJ's cell number?" He said, "Yes." So he gave me AJ's cell number. I called and I said, "AJ, you don't know me. My name's Gary Coca-Cola. In those days, I'm Gary Morris now." <laughs> And I said, I want to buy your lunch. I want to meet you. And that was seven or eight years ago. And here we are now, all these years later. And he's on my show in Monterey, radio yesterday, tonight, Monterey on the night. So it's wonderful to have you here. And, um, and we've had such a great weekend, haven't we? Excellent weekend. We, yesterday we, was a long day. Yesterday was a long day. We started out going <clears throat> to the radio station. Then we went over and had lunch Um at Shallows at the airport, and then we went down to Almost Big Sur, and we saw uh, Savanya and her friends, and we were there in the geodesic dome up in the forest right off of Palo, Colorado, and that was interesting. That was a really interesting afternoon, and then last night, we went to see Bashar at uh, Demetra in Carmel, so that was one long day, wasn't it? It was, it was. So you got to rest a little today, didn't you? Uh, not enough. Not <laughs> <laughs> he went up to see his son in San Jose. But I want to start out because the folks that came to see him yesterday wanted his business advice because this man knows business and he knows how to help people with their business. So let's start off with uh, the folks that came from San Jose yesterday to see you. Why did they want to drive from San Jose to Watsonville to talk to you? What was the reason they came down to see you? Well, when people start a business, they start a business because they have a passion yeah. to do something. But, but they are not expert in, in running a business. So you may be the best uh, chef in the whole world, but doesn't mean you can run a successful restaurant. Yeah. So they had a lot of questions, and really I gave them a lot of answers yesterday. Uh, doing business today is not the same as we did business 20, 30 years ago, and they were trying to run the business that way. Uh, Old-fashioned old style old Today, of doing you need business. to take advantage of the technology. 
uh, you need to create a lot of value. Uh, so people that you're dealing with say you are crazy for giving so much for so little price. So you need uh -huh. to add so much value uh, so the service looks like, wow, that's very cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. You cannot... Uh, so if you ask what's the secret of success of business... Uh, you cannot blame a flood on one drop of rain, mm -hmm. but it is all raindrops combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you need to create relationship. Uh, you need to add a lot of value. You need first to listen to what they want. You're listen. talking about a customer. Customer, exactly. Listen to what the customer wants. And, and actually to make sure that you understood it, you repeat it back to that customer. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest mistake... AJ, that most business owners make in a new business? What do they do? But let me tell you the biggest mistake I did. Yeah. Uh, over success, growing so fast and wasn't ready for it. Ah. Okay, so that was my mistake. So how do you, how do you control that, though? What do you do? Say there's business owner, potential business owners out there tonight that are watching our show, and they want to start a business. What's the biggest mistake, though, that they make going in? Perfect. Fail fast, learn fast. Fail, fail fast. Fail fast, because when you fail fast. at the beginning, it's going to be a lot cheaper than failing in the future. <laughs> okay? Uh, hire uh, somebody smarter than you to mm. run the business. Create a culture at the business, not only for the staff, but for the clients that come in. Create mm. that culture. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do is offer something called better than risk-free money-back guarantee when I deal with clients. Be say that again. Better, better than, than risk-free risk money-back money guarantee. Back money-back guarantee. Everybody's looking for but a money-back guarantee. But it is better guarantee. than risk-free. For example, I had a car wash uh, and I had car wash for over 30 years. And, and <clears throat> we provide the highest and best quality of, of the detail. Uh, but I tell customers when we give them the service, I say, if you aren't happy, and we had it in writing, if you are not happy for any reason, we're going to redo your car. You are still not happy, we're going to refund your money. Oh, boy. So you get the service for free, we're going to refund your money. Then I add, we believe and we know that you work hard for your money. Yeah. So if you don't deliver the service that we promised, we don't deserve to get paid. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's called fall in love with the customer. Uh huh. Okay? You're showing the customer that you really care about sincerity. Them. Sincerity. Fall in love. Yeah. But what most businesses, at least new or salespeople, do the mistake is they want to fall in love with the customer, don't want to do what's best for them, and then they, then they think I can lower the price because I want to take care of them, and that's the biggest mistake uh -huh. they can do. Because you deserve to get paid for the service that you provide. For the value of what the service exactly. is. Yeah. And a lot of salespeople uh, put their, themselves in the shoes of the customer and say, ah, oh, they cannot afford it. Oh. And I say, that's none of your business. Uh -huh. When the customer comes to you, they want the service, you ask a few questions to know what they want, and you provide the best service that they should get regardless of the price. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is up to them to decide if they can afford it afford or not. It, it is not, not up, to, up to you. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's very interesting. We talked about uh, on the radio uh, uh, yesterday at uh, KSCO about AJ and how he got started in business. Uh, well, first of all, tell us, you came to this country at what year? 1985. 1985 from? Well, I came from Liberia, from Africa, but my parents are Lebanese. Lebanese. So you, you were born in but Lebanon. I, I'm, no, I'm, I was born in Liberia. Oh, you were born in Liberia. So okay. I'm actually officially legal. I'm African-American. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you came to the United States in 1985. And where did you first end up in the United States? What city? Uh, I went to Houston, Texas for two years. And what did you do in Houston I when was you first got here? <clears throat> Uh, going to uh, study English, learn English. Okay. But at the same time, I had two jobs. Two jobs. Two jobs. And, and summertime, after I went to college, in summertime, I had even three jobs. So wow. most people in the United States have two jobs than people are unemployed. So jobs is always available. So m more people, now let, let me uh, see if I understand that. More people have two jobs than are unemployed? More, more people have two jobs than the number of people that are unemployed. Really? Yes. And so you had two jobs and sometimes three when yes, you were in yes, Houston? Yes, yes, And what were you doing? Doing? Uh, in, in Houston. 
Well, I did school. valet parking. Yeah, I did school, obviously. Uh, I did valet parking. I was painting. And uh, actually, I did two different valet parking jobs. Valet parking. And, and I loved cars, so you, that was, well, that I, I was drive every car now. And then how did you transition uh, into the car, uh, okay. into the, uh, so car wash business? In 1987, I moved to L.A. Mm -hmm. And I worked at the car wash while going to college at night. And within one week working at the car wash, I said, wow, I love this job. Mm. I said, I'm going to own the business in 10 years. So you set that goal. I, I did. I, you, and the I car wash that you were working at, you said, I'm going to own this car wash. In 10 years. In 10 years. And... and Honestly, I say I came here to live the American dream mm -hmm. because I, uh, I lived in Lebanon during the war, uh, started 1975, and I left end of 1983. But during that time, the, when the war started, I was 11 years old. Uh -huh. During that time, I heard of a lot of Lebanese that we know left to America, and then we heard back mm -hmm. that uh, they came here. Uh, they work hard, they succeeded, they live the American dream. Mm -hmm. So I knew I'm coming here to live the American dream, and I had no idea that we can fail. Because uh -huh. when people succeed, they're going to make sure everybody knows. When uh -huh. somebody fails, they don't say anything. No, they don't say it. So I didn't know that somebody failed in America. Oh. You didn't hear that. I didn't hear it. I didn't know that it uh -huh. existed. Wasn't it also something about the people that you associated with? Yeah. Uh, that that uh, you're born to fail if you're with people who are those kind yes, of people. Yes, yes. Or, uh, tell me that. So my success in the car wash and able to buy it, I, I said, luckily, I did not have any friends to tell mm. me that was impossible. So in 1989, uh, I start listening to uh, audio books a lot mm. and going to seminars. Mm -hmm. And one of the seminars I went to was for uh, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, very well-known guy. Yeah. And he said, if you want to become somebody in the future, drop all your friends that you have today and find new friends that already achieved your dreams and goals. So you look up to people who are successful and then you want to be successful. You go after those people as friends. You want to be in that environment mm -hmm. uh, because... Your subconscious mind, when you're in that environment, is not comfortable that you're down here and they're over here and this is, this is your environment. Mm -hmm. So your subconscious mind is going to help you get over here. Mm -hmm. So today, actually, I say that Tony Robbins was wrong. Really? Yes. What did he say that turned out because to be wrong? Because he said, drop all your friends and find people that already achieved your dreams and goals. Okay. And I say, drop your friends, your existing friends, and find people that achieved way beyond your dreams and goals. Beyond your Way dreams beyond. Okay. Because when you're down here, you can only see up one hill. And then when you climb up to the sail, you're going to see more hills, more, more, more mountains to climb. But if you only got friends that got to this hill, when you got here, you're going to get stuck. So you need to find somebody that achieve way beyond to the... Help you get up to the next level. It's because you don't realize the next level exists uh -huh. because you're down here. I see. I see. You, you also cited uh, a couple of other people that inspired you uh, that when you attended seminars. Who were some of the other people that inspired you? Well, when... Uh, the story of the coach is long, but I had to uh, learn how to sell. When I start selling... Uh, within 30 days, I was faced with a lot of rejections. And when people are faced with rejections, they pull back. Uh, so I don't, they don't want like to... They don't like no. They don't like no, to hear no. No, you can't handle so many no's. And I don't want to get no's anymore. And I say when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So okay. somebody came to me and said, Hey, do you know Tom Hopkins? He has a seminar and he's a sales trainer. He can teach how to sell. Ah, so I went to a seminar. I was making at that time $250 a week, okay. 1989. Okay. And so I went to a seminar. It was $150. For the seminar? For the seminar. And I sat in the front seat. I always sit in the front seat. Uh -huh. And there's and nobody else up there, is there? A lot of times I sit in front. There's nobody, nobody there. Nobody there. There's always room on top. People, yeah. have, It's crowded on the bottom. Yeah. You have to go to the top. But if you want to listen, sit in the front. Sit in the front. Uh, you also have eye contact with the speaker, don't yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And when I went there, as if Tom Hopkins was only talking to me. Oh. It's he told me uh, why, how to handle the word no, but why the word no is good, how to overcome it, and what does it mean. Uh -huh. Okay. And then I was watching him. And I said, you know, I know what made him rich. I said, he became expert at something. 
He wrote a book about it, and uh, now he's on the stage speaking. Mm. And I said, I'm going to do the same that thing. That inspired you. I said, I'm going to do the same thing. I mean, I'm here in America. I cannot fail. Yeah. I can do whatever I want. Now, the only problem was, is obviously I, haven't, I didn't really speak very good English at that time. Okay. I've never written a sentence in my life. Okay. Uh, I've never read a book in English in my life. And I was very introvert. I couldn't speak to more than one-on-one. -on -one. If I have oh. two people in the room, I cannot speak with them. So how would you break and, out of that shell? And I wasn't an expert at anything oh. either. So you made yourself become an expert. Yes. And you started going to all these seminars and, and asking these people who were giving the seminars um, how to write a book. It's first called Do What You Fear Most and You Conquer Fear. Okay. Do what you fear most and conquer fear. Okay. If you do what you fear most, you conquer, conquer the fear. It. Okay. So at the seminar, after the seminar was over, I bought his book. Okay. His book. And it was another $150. So I invested <laughs> in myself $300. And that was the best investment I ever did in my life. Okay. So that's a tip to people that are watching us right now. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. And always invest in yourself. And because of that investment... Uh, I was able to double the sales at the car wash month after month for a few months. And uh, I went to the owner and I said, I'm leaving. <laughs> Is okay. You're turning in your resignation yeah. at the car wash. So, and, and this is what's called employment security. Employment when, security. When you become so much valuable to the business that the business cannot run without you, oh. that's called employment security. And the smart owner will realize that because if that owner is not willing to pay me to keep me somebody else is going to see it going to mm. see me recognize that and pay me more and that's what exactly what happened to you and because of that when i said i'm leaving and because i became so much valuable i earned my first 15 percent of profit of the car wash oh. and eventually went up to 25 percent and eventually i bought it in 1996 so within nine years you was, got you bought the car I wash bought the car with wash. the profits that you from were the car from wash. the car wash Wow. Yes. Is that in this book? It is. It is in the book. Here's the book that, uh, that A.J. wrote. It's called Gain the Unfair Advantage. You can buy this on Amazon. A-J-R-A-S-S-A-M-N-I, Rasamni. And uh, who did the foreword? Someone famous did uh, your foreword. Yes, uh, Robert Allen. So I tell, tell us about, about him. Robert Allen. Tell us about Robert Allen. He wrote, Allen. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine today. Uh, but as I was listening to audio books, he's one of the ones I listened to. He had a book at that time called uh, Nothing Down, mm -hmm. How to Buy a Property with Nothing Down. Uh -huh. I think that, yeah, that was a very famous book. Yes. So when I went to buy the property uh, in 1996, uh, I had half a million dollars that I, I made from the profit of the car wash. Uh -huh. And by the way, I never took that money. I left it with the owner, but we had it on paper, okay. paper and pen. So we had to track. So it was half, like half accumulating over accumulated. the years. And then when you said, okay, it's time, I've got the money here, and you bought the car wash. He wanted to sell it. He got price. And when he got the price, he said, I will buy it at that price. Okay. 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 So he established the price. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, I, I was still missing money to buy the car wash. Okay. So I tried to go to banks and get the money, and nobody would give me the money because I didn't have credit history. Uh, I had good credit, but yeah. it's not history, a yeah. big history. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to a friend of mine next door, owns a 7-Eleven. His name is Raj. Raj Chopra, I still remember his name. And I, because remember, my friends were business owners, and uh -huh. he was one of them. And I told him after I gave up, I couldn't get somebody to give me a loan to buy the place. Uh -huh. And uh, I told him, I think I'm going to give up. I cannot buy the place. And he looked me in the eyes, and he said, A.J., if you don't buy the car wash, you are stupid. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So imagine if my friends were friends that still working yeah. on the bottom. Yeah. They would have said, it's not for you. No, they have talked you out of it. Yeah, they would have talked me out yeah. of it. So he shook me and said, if you don't buy it, you are stupid. You're stupid, yeah, yeah. Then I went to another friend of mine. His name is Vic Kalfayan. And uh, he's a mechanic. He's doing very well. He owns properties. And I told him, I cannot, I don't have the money to buy the place. I said, don't worry. I have a house in Bakersfield. It's paid off. It's worth $100,000. I'll get the loan and give you the money. Oh, my goodness. And so your friend helped you in, basically get started. I did not take the money. You didn't? I refused to take money from him. But I remembered Robert Allen. 
And I remember there's nothing down. Ah. So I went back to the owner and I said, this is the deal. I get the car wash, you keep the money, and every year, this is how much I'm gonna pay you. Oh. And within very short few years, really money. within two years, actually three years, I paid the car wash ah. off. So it's really not- So did you get the idea from Robert from Allen? From Robert Allen, you yes, did. yes, yes. And then I met with Robert Allen, and we became very good friends. Actually, I call him anytime I want. Uh, I've been to his house so many times. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, and you had not known Robert I Allen. I have not known him. Until you went to the seminar. Yes. So the tip to all of you out there, young people that are out there, and that's why the folks drove down from San Jose yesterday to see yeah, you, yeah, yeah. is because they wanted some advice from this man. This man has been there, has, has done it, and uh, you can talk to uh, AJ if you want to. Talk to him. Uh, he'll give his cell phone number. Uh, go get your pencil right now, and you can call AJ, and he's available for business advice. What is the cell number for uh, you? Yeah, you can call my cell, or you can text me. The uh, number is 559-284-1919. 559 easy to remember. 284-1919. You know why it's easy to your remember? Your number is 1919 our, over our here. Huh? Number, now, is that synchronicity? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Two eight four one nine one nine. Ours is well. I've, you know what ours is. So, the secret of success is a principle. I don't know if uh, you yeah, can see it over here. Yeah, just tilt it down a little. Okay. So yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, that camera right there. Okay. What's what's it saying? Okay. So it starts with the vision. You okay. have to have a vision, and the vision is if you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. So if you can't, if you don't believe that you can achieve certain limits. You're not going to achieve it. So you have to envision it first. You have to say, I have can to do this. see it happen. I can, I can see it happen. Okay. I can see myself right there. So this is really the first thing. It's, it's mental. Mm -hmm. You have to get that. And the second one is uh, leadership. You need to surround yourself with leadership, and you need to become a leader too. Mm -hmm. So this is the story of surrounding yourself with successful people. Uh, the third one is called win-win. Everything you do... Uh, you need to think of the other person in front of you. They need to win before you win. Uh, it cannot be win-lose. They cannot win and you lose, and they cannot lose and you win. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's basically win-win for both of us or there's no deal. Uh -huh. uh, so I did that a lot with a uh, customer came to the car wash. I'll tell you a story. Uh -huh. uh, customer came to the car wash, and at that time, our detail is it's always more expensive than anybody in the area, maybe twice the price or three times the price because we – offered the highest the highest and the, the best highest. you and were the doing the best otherwise you're not really doing a favor for yeah, the customer yeah. so they came to me and he wanted the best package at that time and i looked at his car and i asked him uh, he told me it was painted and th that's why he, want, he wants it to be detailed so he agreed on the price i gave him but when i checked the car i said look the paint is effective here, the paint is effective here, the paint is effective here. You need to take it back and have it fixed. Mm -hmm. So I refused to take the money from him without letting him know that the car is wrong. Yeah, there was a problem with the paint job. There's a problem with the paint job. And, and he went, and of course, when it was fixed, he came back. Okay. So you need to be honest, and you always have yeah. to create a win-win yeah. situation. You just don't want to make the sale just to make the sale. You exactly. want to be honest with exactly. the customer. Exactly, exactly. And they respect you for that. Exactly. And, and this is what fall in love with the customer in front yeah. of you. Yeah. Uh, give a lot of value. And the next one is you need to create a system for success. So a lot of things, uh, you, there's uh, time management, there's four quadrants. The first one is uh, not important, not urgent. You should never touch that. Delegate it to somebody else. Uh, the second one is uh, important, not urgent, mm. which is basically like the phone is ringing. And yeah. you know what it is, and that's not, not something... Uh, it's the ring of the phone is important, yeah. but the message to waste your time to answer is not important. I see. So you need to learn to be successful is delegate to other people the things to that do really that. you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, you At, should uh, let someone else answer the phone? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. The third one is important and urgent. And uh, that means if everything is important and urgent, you need to work on it. That means you live in a chaos. Ah, yes. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and and I've seen that happen. Yeah, you live in a chaos. You cannot live there. It's very stressful. So what you need, where you need to be is something important and not urgent. And how you do that? Uh, you need to go. So, and honestly, this happens in, in the government. We run the government today. So I don't talk politics. But, uh, but all what we do is we work with the symptoms 
We just consider the symptoms and want to fix the symptoms. You cannot fix the symptoms. You need to find the cause, the cause. and fix the Tell cause. Tell them the story about the puppies. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Uh, there were three sisters uh, next to the river, and one sister saw a puppy in the river. So she jumped in to save the puppy. The other sister looked up the stream and saw a few puppies there falling down in the river. I mean, going in the river. So she jumped in to help those puppies. And the third sister ran away. And, and, and both sisters said, what did she run away? We need her to help us. But what she did, she went up the stream and she found out where the puppies are falling and she stopped it. She stopped it. And this is what uh, important, not urgent is. So yeah, you need difference. to work with the urgency on the bottom, yeah. uh, but at the same time, you need to find the cause. It's cause. Yeah. And uh, That's work a with great the cause. St- I love that story, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You are amazing. You really are. And I surely look forward to, to hearing you on the radio. Are you ready to do that? I am ready. He's going to go do a radio show um, because of what happened yesterday at KSCO. He's ready for radio in his own show. And he's going to be giving business advice. You know, that kind of show could go national. Do you know what national means? You could go all over the United States with your show. And you've got a great name now for the company. What's the the name of the company? Uh, Actually, that's my nonprofit organization. Okay. And what's it called? Called Success from Within. Success from Within. You have? Do you have a website for that? Uh, no, not, not yet. yet. Not okay. yet. I'm getting the 501c3 on right now. It's, it's going to be su- a 501c3. <clears throat> Success yeah, which is from Within. Nonprofit. Success it's basically, I believe, whatever happens around you in the world, you are in charge of it, because the change starts from within. Yeah. It's 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 whatever happened. You uh, what differentiate us from from animals is animals have action reaction stimulus reaction but we have stimulus we have a pause because we have a brain and when and when you pause then you can decide if you want to react or you want to respond yeah he's got a million of them he really does we've had the the pleasure of of each other's company because i sure have enjoyed him here this last weekend visiting from fresno of course you all know i think you know that Fresno was my original hometown, born and raised there, and then moved here 17, 18 years ago. Um, and that's how I ended up here tonight, because I'm a citizen of this fine community now. But I still get back to Fresno and, and stop by to visit with AJ and Sharon. And um, I'm going to just, I, I'm going to feel so great, quite honestly, when you have that radio show. And if it goes national, AJ, you're going to remember tonight that I predicted that for you. Thank you. Actually, if you ask my wife, she's sitting outside. I was so introvert uh, when we met 30 years ago, when we go to like Chamber of Commerce events. Yeah. I sit on a chair. I didn't talk to anybody. Oh, wow. So I changed. You have sure come degrees. out of your uh, shell. Unbelievable. How'd that happen? Uh, Is Sharon responsible for that? No, because no. I decided I wanted to change. Uh-huh. So you have to realize that your brain and your emotion are two different things. Yeah. Uh, there's a good story. Uh, if you have two dogs inside of you and one is whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And the other one is whoa, whoa, whoa. Which one is stronger? Mm, good question. It's the one you feed the most. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and another thing, it's, uh, who said it? I forgot now. But you are what you think about all the time. So it's who you think you yeah. are, what you think. What, it's what you this think. who you yeah. become. I hear you. Boy, this has been great. And uh, again, I can see now, because of that number, I can remember his cell phone number. And I can't usually remember anything. 559-284-1919. Yes. Is that right? Yes, I didn't yes, write yes, it yes. down either. I just, <laughs> off the top of my head, 284-1919. Give AJ a call, and he'll help you with your business. There might be a small fee because he's consulting, but uh, give him a call, and uh, he's a wonderful man. Uh, you love this guy like I do. And uh, A.J. Rasomni, the book is Gain the Unfair Advantage. It's available on Amazon. Go pick it up. Order it tonight. You'll love it. It's uh, 200 and some pages here. Almost 300 pages. Almost 300 pages. Great reading. Um, and, and look, how many people can reach out to this man 
give him a call on his cell phone and say, AJ, I need your help. I need your help with my business. He'll do it. He'll help you. AJ, thank you so much. Thank you very much it's, for having it, me. It's been thank a you. pleasure to have you here tonight on Monterey on Tonight.